This video is sponsored by LD Player. LD Player is an Android emulator for Windows. I play as a lane and other games here, as it can run multiple game instances simultaneously. Letting me enjoy my favorite space shooter game while farming for the upcoming event. If you're farming with multiple accounts, LD Player got your back, as you can also run multiple accounts at the same time. LD Player lets you run the game in HD. With these sharp images, you can enjoy that L2D animations. Download LD Player now, link is in the description. Now onto our video. Together with the introduction of Operation Siren, Gear Lab were also included where you can craft for stronger equipment. Hello and welcome. This is Neldrin and today let's discuss the Gear Lab and which items are good to craft. But before that, if you are not yet subscribed, this is the sign you are waiting for to hit the subscribe button. Gear Lab is where you can upgrade your existing gears into a stronger one. However, not every gear should be upgraded because of the limitation of materials, plus some of the upgrades offer a small amount of improvement. The materials in the gear lab are farmable in Operation Siren. There is no specific area for a specific item. By completing strongholds and abyss bosses will grant you a fair amount of random gold materials needed in the gear labs. Another good source for materials would be the Hidden Zones and Corrosion Level 5 and 6. These zones have multiple floating crates which give you random materials. However it will be very tedious to farm due to the fact that gold and rainbow rarity materials are randomly dropped. Lastly, the said zones have a chance to have two Meow P Sair search points at most, and if you are lucky, you can get gold and rainbow materials here too. Since zones with Corrosion 5 and 6 are almost the same in terms of drops, it is better to farm at Corrosion 5 due to lower AP cost. In general, you want to craft gears based on what you need or what you want. But due to the limitation of materials, especially some of the gears that share the same required materials to be crafted, I suggest saving some materials enough to build high-quality gears such as the Wyvern and Bitter so that you have enough materials once you've collected the needed amount of design plans or required equipment. First, for the DD gun. Only twin 128mm DD gun from the Iron Blood is good to build. Since only a few destroyers benefit from this gun, and it is better to equip a cruiser gun for a battleship secondary gun, only build this when needed. The DD gun of Eagle Union and Sakura Empire are both farmable in the main campaign. And the DD gun from the Royal Navy is just a small upgrade from its predecessor, so no need to craft the said guns. For the light cruiser guns, each faction's guns are good, except for the Eagle Union. The Neptune gun is the best cruiser gun you can craft here, which is also the best auxiliary gun for battleships. The two newly included guns which are the upgraded Belfast gun and the gold twin 150mm are the best guns you can craft for cruisers. Because the better guns are strictly limited and hard to craft. If you are planning to produce multiple copies, I suggest going for the upgraded Belfast gun since the prerequisite is farmable and has the least amount of opsy materials needed. Only craft the two AP guns when necessary. Going to the heavy cruiser guns. The rune gun from Iron Blood and the one from the Royal Navy are good to build. Build either of them depending on the ammo type you will need. The CA guns from the Sakura Empire and Eagle Union are slightly worse from the two recommended so no need to craft them. For the battleship guns. Since most of the competitive guns are obtainable via research, in my opinion, only the Azumo gun from the Sakura Empire is good to craft here. This is a good alternative while you don't have the Champagne gun yet. If you are just starting out, 
No need to upgrade your twin 410mm into this gun, since APBB guns are only good against medium and heavy armored boss fleets. The new 406mm gun is not great in my opinion. Since it has some drawbacks for prolonged battle, you want to use this for mob fleet. However, there is already a more accessible gun for this. The cost for a slight improvement is not worth, considering the high cost of OPSI materials. Regarding the Monarch gun from the Royal Navy, it is not worth the build because the purple triple 406mm is better. The Monarch gun will only get slightly better if you enhance it to plus 13. The minor improvement you will get from additional expenses is also not worth it, considering the gold plate and coins it will cost. The fastest BB gun and King George gun are highly situational and only recommended on a few ships. For the surface torpedoes, you may build the gold quad magnetic torpedo or the gray quintuple if you are playing in auto mode. The magnetic quintuple torpedo is not quintessential due to the high cost in crafting and in upgrading. And you don't want to waste your wild card material for this because of a better option which will be discussed later on. When playing in manual mode, no contest to this torpedo from the Royal Navy as it has the best pattern. Now for the AA guns. Most of the good equipment here is farmable, so you may skip building them here. Some of the AA guns are luxurious and not worth building. They are the best in slot, but you need to consider the huge cost for a slight improvement. For the AA guns, the only acceptable to build here are the battleship and gunboat AA guns. They are good to have, due to the stat boost they provide, but not a priority since you can get away with the farmable AA guns. For the fighter planes, build at most four copies of Tiger Cat from the Eagle Union. You don't really need a lot of copies of this, because strong fighters are only necessary in stage 12 and 13. The rest are for speed adjusting and the Tiger Cat has slow reload which highly affects the timing calculation. The Sea Hornet of the Royal Navy is also good, but slightly worse and more expensive than the Tiger Cat because you also need to craft the prerequisite fighter plane. Only craft the Sakura Empire fighters if the ship needs the faction-specific equipment. Either Kawanishi or Repu are good to build here. And let's ignore the German fighter plane. Okay the next part might be a bit convoluted, since torpedo and dive bombers are on the same category. You've already heard about the Wyvern and its legendary damage. As much as possible, your materials should be going here. But because the design plan is difficult to farm and it takes around 2 to 3 cycles of Opsy to farm enough prints, including the wild cards. You may build the Sky Pirate as an alternative as it is the second best torpedo bomber. Remember that these two torpedo bombers use the same Opsi materials, so do not produce tons of Sky Pirate. You need to build at least one copy of Sky Pirate for independence to enjoy the increased efficiency. The upgrade to Helldiver is good but not necessary. Since their power level at plus 10 is almost identical, the only advantage of the gold Helldiver is when you upgrade it to plus 13, which will be costly. This is a similar case to the BB guns mentioned earlier. The Suisse Recon plane is the best in slot for aviation battleships. Feel free to craft this one, due to the cheap cost. However, this Recon plane cannot be equipped to I-13. If you need a Recon plane for her, craft the Say Ran, due to the increased damage it offers. You can craft the Ryusei, but only if, gathering the prints from research, is taking too long. You can craft the Suisei Dive Bomber and Ju-87 if you need to speed adjust the timing of your airstrike. They deal lesser damage but are still acceptable. For the submarine torpedoes, only the Bitter from the Royal Navy and G-7E from the Iron Blood are good to craft here. The torpedo material needed in Bitter is hard to farm from the weekly raid and SOS mission. 
While gathering enough materials, go for the G7E. Skip building the newly introduced Type 95 from the Sakura Empire. Unlike vanguards where you have an option to target manually the torpedoes, submarines don't have this feature. So using non-magnetic torpedoes is inconsistent since it has a higher chance to miss the target. Yes, the Type 95 has better damage on paper, but if it misses, then it doesn't offer any value at all. But to quickly summarize, the following are my recommended gears to build in the gear labs. I hope that this helps you decide which to craft. If I missed something or there is something you wish to add, feel free to comment it down below. And don't forget to subscribe and share this video to support my channel. You guys are awesome and see you next time.